Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my first iceberg video on my channel. Today I'm going to be checking out the obscure media iceberg created by user Semidios. What makes something obscure is that we don't know much about the topic. It can either be something of a lost media or just plain out weird. Obscure media comes in multiple forms like films and random drug PCAs. What all have in common is that it's a lesser known piece of media. Like most icebergs on YouTube, the topics that are on the surface are well known but towards the bottom it becomes a something of a... yeah... Anyways, I'm pretty sure you know the basic principles of an iceberg video. I'm gonna have some rust b-roll footage on the back. I hate this game. Unlike most videos on my channel, I believe this is gonna be more lighthearted, you know, than most videos on my channel. Just a heads up, it might get weird. Let's get started. Pink Morning Cartoon Pink Morning Cartoon was an animated children's show that aired on the station WINJLP in Columbus, Ohio. The show was animated and edited by station owner Rev, and the episodes were produced from um, 1996 to 2004 and were worked on constantly, which reflects the animation quality. It was considered a lost media until YouTuber Jacob Chick uploaded four Pink Morning Cartoon videos. This caused a massive search for more videos, and ultimately the creator's granddaughter joined the Discord server in which the investigation was being held, and she confirmed that the creator passed away in 2017. She also said that the original tapes of the show were stolen and possibly destroyed by a cousin. Goofy, I'm blue. Die body. I'm confused about this entry, but essentially I'm not sure, but this can be a piece of lost media. I Am Blue is an endurance song released in 1998 by Italian group FL65, if I'm pronouncing that right. It was featured as the opening theme of Iron Man 3, and the song was also featured in the radio Disney albums. Mario CDI, Quanda Boa. This entry comes from a Brazilian video that looks pretty interesting. It depicts Mario and Luigi talking about Bowser stealing the Princess Peach. Later they see Bowser and Mario decides to shoot him at the end of the video. I married her, Apparently loads of people were recommended this video out of nowhere, resulted in the video getting half a million views. On to the next entry I guess. The Incredibles, first in line. Essentially, prior to the release of The Incredibles, three online promotional trailers were made. They were all titled, first in line, still first in line, and first in line sold out. This was another piece of lost media. Information online about these shorts were sparse. The first two shorts are reportedly to show a male fan of the upcoming film waiting in line. The ad was discovered on March 18th, 2020, pretty recently. It was found on a promotional CD-ROM that was distributed in the UK. You can look it up on YouTube if you want to see it. It's pretty weird. Aum Shiroku Anime. When I looked this up, all I could say is what the hell, man. Aum Shiroku was a weird anime from 1984 and produced by the same name. This was based basically cult propaganda hidden within an anime cartoon. The cult group would later use siren gas to force innocent Japanese subway writers to quote unquote transcend from this world to the one of the dead. The anime starts with church-like music. It shows the creator of the cult starting to flood out of his body and starts to move around in a new astral form. He starts flying around and it cuts to the people of the cult praying. Then the leader starts jumping up and down. Later in the video, it cuts to the real version of the guy praying. Kinda looks like Wendigoon. The leader was named Shoku Arusawa and good news, he's dead now. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> Fletcher Hanks Comics Fletcher Hanks was an unknown comic book artist from 1939 to 1941. He created characters that I'm pretty sure you never heard of. Stardust the Super Wizard, Fonmaha the Mystery Woman of the Jungle, Big Red Lane, and the King of the Northwoods. Hanks' works were described to be clumsy, crude, incompetent, and just plain ugly. Oh yeah, and he was also an alleged drunk who abused his wife and kids before abandoning them. Also, his body was found in a park in Manhattan. He was found frozen to death. Jimmy Neutron Interruptions The Jimmy Neutron Interruptions were a promotional ad that would appear during the shows of Nickelodeon. When the Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius movie was released in 2001, they ran these ads to promote the movie. Some were interrupted with humor shorts during the Rugrats episode the audio was changed Socks. you know we like to stick but, together and but, do fun but, stuff but. why don't we be scouts? another one giving Spongebob Squarepants cast hair in the style of Jimmy's another one that was confirmed to exist had a Spongebob episode and being made into puppets a total of 25 ads were released some were found and lost others existence are unconfirmed till this day people are trying to find these clips join in and help the cause if you're interested 
Simple 2000 series. In Japan during the PS1 era, publisher D3 put out a series of games called Simple 1500. Each game was unrelated. When the PS2 was released, D3 put out Simple 2000. There were a total of 123 games which were all mixed, from car games to bowling games, it was all over the place. Publisher D3 has been active since 2012 with the latest release of Family Party, 30 Great Games, Obstool Arcade, maybe they'll come back, who knows. GTA San Andreas PS2 hacks I don't know why this is obscure, but it's pretty obvious that GTA San Andreas had cheat codes. The cheat codes, however, had, are exclusively for the PlayStation 2 version. These cheat codes include getting $2,500,000, full health, and full armor. You can commit suicide, have a faster clock, and much more. This game has lots of cheats that you probably have to hop on and try it out sometime on the PS2. Early CGI facial animation In 1974, Frederick Park from the University of Utah College of Engineering created the first computer-generated human face which is goddamn terrifying. It has trippy synthesizer music which makes it even more creepy. This shit reminds me of some curse animation you'll see in YouTube. It might be worse to be honest. Take a look. Skate TV Skate TV is a program shown on Nickelodeon that began in 1990, and it was originally hosted by Matthew Lippard and Skate Master Tate. It introduced the audience to various techniques of handheld cameras. It was hosted by a wide variety of skateboarders such as Kristen Hosey, Nate Kupas, and young Tony Hawk. There was 13 episodes in total. It was lost for a time until it reappeared online during 2021. You can check them out if you want. Iron Man 28 LG TV commercial. I gotta be honest, I didn't really find anything about this. However, I did come across some old LG commercials that promote the Iron Man film. So yeah, that's pretty much it. On to the next one. Eminem, The Slim Shady Show. The Slim Shady Show was a 2000 show about Slim Shady along with his friends, Ken, Carville, Marshall, Big D, and others going through adventures across Detroit. The show includes the music producer Eminem as the lead cast member. The main character, Slim Shady, is apparently extremely unlikable and obnoxious. I never heard about this show, but according to IMDB, it scores a 5.5. So it's safe to say it sucks. Rocket Robin Hood, 1967. This was a 60s Canadian cartoon series set in the future, the year's 2000, starring Rocket Robin Hood and his Merry Men. Produced by Toronto-based Trillium Productions, the series has been largely forgotten. I'm pretty sure the reason why it's on the iceberg was because animation sequences from this show was reused in episodes of the 1967 Spider-Man series, and two episodes were recycled with Spider-Man replacing Robin. Let's continue. Erie, Indiana, 1991. Erie, Indiana is an American horror series that aired on NBC from September 15th, 1991 to April 12th, 1992. It was a horror show that looked like it was for kids, that was put on schedule for kids, but wasn't for kids. It had an upsetting atmosphere and was unsettling. It dealt with adult concepts, critiquing the average American life, being trapped in the past by being afraid of the future, the dangers of capitalism, and the fear of losing our humanity. A total of 19 episodes were produced, with the final episode airing on the Disney Channel after getting cancelled. Arisa Good Luck. Alright, Arisa Good Luck is an anime that exists for no reason. When I tried looking up, I found nearly none information about this. Apparently, this was a near lost media anime that was animated by an indie studio. The director of it is Kageyama Shinginori, if I'm pronouncing that right, goddamn. The character designer is Ryuma Royo, and the voice actor of Arisa was Hori Yu. Initially, Arisa Good Luck was produced for a VHS release. If you want to check it out, the YouTuber Hazla made a one hour video about the subject, so go check it out, it will be linked in the description. What's wrong with you? What's your problem? Okay, this entry of the list refers to a skit from Public Access TV show that believed to be from the Terrytown, New York area. It ran from the early 80s and depicts a guy sitting at a table trying to eat. In the background, someone is saying, what's wrong with you? What's your problem? I'm trying to eat a fish. What is wrong with you? Trying to eat a fish and it falls off the plate. The guy wants the other guy to shut up as he's trying to eat the fish. I can imagine how public TV access could have been like the early YouTube in the sense. Like, look at this. Don't tell me you can't see this and be in the early days of YouTube. Come on now. Garfield, Keep It Cool Cat, 1995. In 1995, Garfield made an endurance album called Keep It Cool Cat. That's pretty much it. I mean, there's also a bootleg Russian cassette version that features a cat that is not Garfield. Nothing interesting here, or at least not much. On to the next one. Schnell Online. 
Schnell Online is a black and white MMO. Apparently this game does not exist on the clear net. On Fortune's X board, Anon posted a message questioning the existence of Schnell Online. He states that supposedly it used by on the dark net, but it included to be a user called Q that hasn't been tracked down. This person's whereabouts are unknown and we'll never know about the true Chanel online. Check out Nexo's video. He did a really good video on the subject if you want a deeper look into it. So yeah, I recommend watching that. Star Trek convention, the first furry caught on film. Supposedly, this entry is about the first furry caught on film. At 1976 Star Trek Con, it shows an intergalactic cat being interviewed. The interviewer is saying where in the universe he is from. The furry responds everywhere. Where in the uh, planets are you located? Um, really, I don't know. Just here and there and everywhere, you know. I don't know anything about Star Trek, but to be honest, this first furry kind of looks creepy, especially with the old footage making it look eerie. This guy was ahead of his time. Anyways, let's continue. Goth Public Access Goth Public Access was an unsettling public TV show that depicted a young goth teen introducing the show with a dark atmosphere. The one clip that surfaced online was of a young goth reading off a morbid poem, later seems to lose his place in the poem and starts awkwardly exchanging with the co-host which is a bigger woman, which strangely looks off from place. The main host is called Saul and he was terribly bullied at school. He started cutting himself and listening to dark music. He later was given a public access show he had control over. There isn't lots of information about this show. I would recommend a video from Ramtro Studios if you want to know more about this. The story of Srebrenica. Oh boy, now it gets real. The story of Srebrenica refers to the Srebrenica massacre, the slain of more than 7,000 Bosnian Muslim boys and men by Bosnian Serb for in Srebrenica on July 1995. In addition, it included more than 20,000 civilians being expelled from the area. So basically what they did was ethnic cleansing. This massacre was the worst episode of mass murder within Europe since World War II. The pictures speak for themselves. Look at these. Oh my god. Rest in peace for the people who died. The Adventures of Whaleman. The Adventures of Whaleman was an online YouTube series uploaded by Scrappy64. The first episode shows a man in an inflatable whale costume dancing to What's Love Got to Do It With It by Tina Turner. This video was uploaded in 2006, which reflects the upload quality at the time. Whaleman 2 shows the same thing, nothing special, but why is the video age restricted? Huh. Yeah, pretty weird stuff. Tommy Wiseau, Street Fashions, USA Commercial, supposedly the first time after Tommy Wiseau ever appeared on a film. This ad was created by Tommy himself for his street fashion importing business to get a SAG affiliation. There's a mystery about where Tommy gets his money. Even in the film The Disaster Artist, they claim that nobody knows how he made his fortune. Some rumors claim that he got his money from drug sales or some weird foreign mafia connection. Bart the General Bart the General is a series of animated short films made by a group called Falcom. This series is based on the popular cartoon The Simpsons. The series is a complete trip, the sort of stuff you'll see when you're drunk. The animation style looks like it's drawn on MS Paint. The narrative is extremely surreal and frightening. It's extremely hard to follow. The plot can be best summed up as Homer living a peaceful life in a quiet suburb. When one day a person named Giorgio Robecki arrives and kicks on Morden out of the street and starts to make Bart's life hell. If you don't want to risk killing some brain cells, I don't recommend watching this, but here you go. Helios. Helios was a fairly normal maze game. You control a ball that glides around, releasing air like a balloon. Why it's on this list is because of its backstory. Supposedly, the developer of Helios claimed that he didn't even make the game himself. Rather, he got it from aliens. He said that he was once visited by a UFO at his home in Florida in May 1993. He later got knocked out by the aliens and the game mysteriously appeared on his computer. The game presented destroyed graphics and everything was written in runic alien language. Nickelodeon Breakfast Time Commercial This Nickelodeon PSA encouraged children to eat breakfast. It was obscured to the public for the fact that it was lost media at some point until it was discovered. The song gets stuck in your head. If I open up deep memory within your brain, then you're welcome, I guess. First Animated Hobbit This entry includes a bizarre movie called The Hobbit 1966. Yes, the same Hobbit from J.R.R. Tolkien. It's 12 minutes long. The movie was written and directed by Gene Detch, the same guy that works on episodes of Tom and Jerry and Popeye. According to Gene, the actual story of making the movie was one that began with great promise before crashing and burning into an unexpected way. It took him a total of 30 days to write the script and to animate it. The movie itself was never seen by any 
any other audience beyond some handful of people in New York in 1966, until the short film appeared on YouTube in 2012, Mandrill Maze. Okay, next up is Mandrill Maze. Essentially what it is, it's an animation made on an Amiga computer in which the viewer is navigated through a short maze, looping maze with mandrill faces covered in the walls with looping music as well. It was created by Alan Hanstrings in 1988. The image of the mandrill was known as the standard test image. It was used to test rendering abilities of the software at the time. It was also uploaded to YouTube on September 12, 2007 by user Delta Ray 3 Basically, this is an early internet meme. Game of Death. Game of Death was an obscure cancelled survival horror game. It was in development for the PS2, Xbox, and PC by German team Burns Entertainment Software in 2001. The game starts with the protagonist being hospitalized after a lethal call accident. When the doctors try to save him, he dreams of a strange world where you have to defeat evil serial killers to survive. You go through intense circumstances where you have to defeat 40 bosses without losing your innocence, otherwise you'll lose your life at the end of the game. As far as we know, Burns Games weren't able to be find a publisher for this game. In the end, the game was cancelled and the company vanished forever after a few years. Pokemon Frigger Returns Pokemon Frigger Returns was an obscure ROM hack for Pokemon Ruby. What's included in the game are new graphics, nice title screen, great gameplay. It forces the player to attempt to catch the very first Pokemon on a new route, and if your Pokemon faints, then you must release it. Mikakunen Shonen Gido. This is an obscure manga in which the protagonist of the story, Shura, meets Gido, a boy who identifies himself as a doctor of unidentified creatures. He later shocks her with his true self as a mysterious creature. It ran from 2004 to 2005 on Weekly Shonen Jump. There's no background information about this manga, as I couldn't find anything about it. Shopping Mall Exercises. This entry is pretty weird because of the acting. The lady in the video is over enthusiastic as she complains the joy of walking around in the shopping mall. Where I park my car, I get out of the car and I close the door and I do some warm ups, you know. This may seem very silly to you, but I warm one, two, one, two, one, two. It has some awkward moments where she pauses and looks at the camera. I bet the lady in the video is a struggling actor trying to get auditions. Wonder if that's working out for her. Some people on Reddit assume that she might be on some sort of drugs because of the pauses and eye shifting in the video, as well as the word silly being frequently used. ABA Sindraba. I honestly didn't even find anything about this. All I found was a song from Borks Borsnink and Alex Atrevolv. The video doesn't even have 10k views, so that's all I got, really. Anything new, put in the comments. 4 minutes of BBC TV from 1938. This 4 minute compilation from 1938 exists only because of a technological fluke and the enthusiasm of two television buffs, one in Britain and the other one in America, where thanks to a freak atmospheric condition, it was picked up and recorded on a camera placed in front of a television screen as the images came in. Andrew Emerson, the British enthusiast, spent 5 years tracking down the recording and believes it is the only surviving example of pre-war live high-definition British television. Nickelodeon On January 1st, 2000, Nickelodeon broadcasted a documentary in which they interviewed kids and teens about their hopes, fears, and predictions from the upcoming millennium. This was never shown again. The whole documentary was five hours long. I'm probably never gonna watch the whole thing all the way through, but it's still interesting. Bleach Man HIV AIDS Superhero This depicts a superhero called Bleach Man. He wears a bleach jug head, crimson cap, and oversized needle. In the late 80s, the San Francisco AIDS Foundation launched a campaign targeting IV drug users before needle exchanges or safe injection rooms. Encouraging addicts to sterilize their needles with household bleach before reusing them was one problematic way of reducing HIV transmitted rates. Tom Clark, never mind. So in the mid 90s, a kid named Tom Clark recorded himself singing over the Nevermind album and gave it to somebody as an apology gift for losing the tape of a random mixtape to the OP he had around. He apparently recorded the whole thing in a karaoke machine. Complete with puberty filled voice cracking and occasional incorrect lyrics. Do you think this guy was morally wrong to release this record or was it super cool? 
Kuma Uta. Kuma Uta translates to Bear Song is a communication game in which you have to teach a polar bear named Kuma how to sing Enka, which is a popular genre of music in Japan. You can decide the themes of the songs and you can also complete them by giving Kuma advice and by fixing the lyrics. If the songs are successful enough, you can receive fan letters. The game had an online mode so you can share the songs with other people. Ultimately, the game wasn't successful, but thanks to the popularity of Vocaloid, more people started creating original songs with Kuma years after it released. The Absol Maze. The Absol Maze was a liminal space image that was posted on Reddit. Apparently, it was some guy named Signbear999 who was obsessed with computers as a kid. He downloaded a zip file of the Pokemon Generation 3 theme pack. He reskinned the 3D Maze screensaver for the old Windows operating systems with a drawn Absol. Signbear would later go on Reddit and release a video of himself launching the actual screensaver in the basement of his house. Pretty interesting stuff. George Lucas, 80s Parasonic Commercial Apparently, Japanese Twitter has unearthed a series of 1980s Japanese TV commercials featuring the filmmaker George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, signing the praises of the Parasonic the Electronics business. In the commercials, Lucas speaks in simple Japanese, ending with the tagline, It's a most something new, which can be directly translated to, Always something new. I dream of visions which have yet to be seen. It's more that I see you Lucas recorded six commercials in total for Parasonic that aired on Japanese television in 1987 to 1998, a few years after the release of Return of the Jedi. Later, all six of George Lucas's television commercials for Parasonic could be found on YouTube. Very, very old demo reel. We made it to the bottom of the rabbit hole with this entry. There's a video on YouTube titled The Very, Very Old Demo Reel. The content of this video is really unsettling. It's old VFX footage from 2006. Demonic creatures slowly walk towards the camera and walk on the kitchen counter. This sort of stuff is what made the early days of YouTube. Kind of gives me nostalgic vibes in a sense. Smile, short scary film. Smile is a 2006 animation made in Jerusalem. The characters look disturbing because of the oversized heads. It kind of looks like it was overlaid with actual people, combining CGI with real life. Later in the video, the protagonist starts to see images of a smiling face. Then he starts to see the people around him transform with a smiling face. Again, such an obscure animation that I've never heard of but seems interesting. The Adventures of Super Pup. This one's actually kind of funny. The Adventures of Super Pup was a 1958 unaired pilot that was meant to capitalize on the success of The Adventures of Superman. The TV producer Whitney Ellsworth created a pilot that placed Superman into a universe populated by dogs instead of human beings. It was filmed on the same set of The Adventures of Superman and dwarfs portrayed the characters. Although never aired on television, black and white copies of the pilot circulated and surfaced among fans and at occasional comic convention screenings from the 1970s onwards. They also surfaced on unauthorized VHS tapes. In 2006, Warner Brothers released the pilot as an extra bonus on the DVD set Superman Ultimate Collector's Edition. High Octane 1994 High Octane is a 1994 American television series that aired on the Comedy Central. It was directed by Sofia Coppola. It consisted of interviews and sketches hosted by Coppola and Zoe Casvetes. Only three of the four episodes that recorded were broadcasted. Didn't really find anything else about it, but if you guys have any information about it, just put it in the comments below. Shell gas station training video, Robbie and Ryu. This training video is an absolute gold. The video tries so hard and to be good, it just becomes funny. The acting is pretty terrible and makes the whole video 10 times funnier. Especially the part of the robbery where the robbers are represented by clowns. Also this line. Never slam your dick in the toilet seat. The video has cursing in it too, surprisingly. The robber. Give me the motherfucking money! I ain't giving you shit, motherfucker! Remember. This is comedy gold, which wasn't obscure, it just deserves more views. 964 Pinocchio 964 Pinocchio is an obscure 1991 Japanese cyberpunk horror film directed by Shonfius Kuriki. It deals with the theme of brain-modified sex slaves as, so as well as mental breakdowns. A brief synopsis of the movie goes like this. Pinocchio was thrown out by his owners for failure of doing certain sexual things I won't say on YouTube. He is later discovered by a homeless girl named Himako. She teaches Pinocchio how to speak. Much more things happen that I won't say because YouTube will kill my channel. The Peter and Tweeter show. Yet another weird public access show. It shows an old guy talking to two large stuffed animals about the Bible. The dolls kind of look like they have blood stains on their face if you look closely. It gives off an eerie feeling because there is no sound, just silence. 
it's just a guy talking. What is taught in the Bible that is very difficult to... Uh, uh, you would think that stuffed animals would talk, but they just sit there. Lufta Pergitin. Again, this entry is too obscure. I couldn't find anything about this, but however, I did find a video description in the Albanian, so I translated it, and this is what it says. Children have fun in a city park. Among them, a man eats an ice cream with dirty hands. Along with the ice cream, he freezes the germs. It doesn't take long before the child gets sick with the fever. The microbes have passed through the digestive system and from there into the stomach and then into the blood. It is the determined intervention of the doctor through penicillin that ends the fight between the microbes and the body's antibodies. The child recovered, but everything was a good lesson. Toe Jam, Big Toy This obscure music video was created in 1995. The Toe Jam group was formed in 1995 in Rochester, New York. In 1998, they changed their name to Relative and Release in their only album in 2001. Later, they broke up in 2002. Pretty obscure again so like if you guys have anything about this just leave in the comments because there's a lot of things on this iceberg that i do not know a lot about and frankly there is not enough research about this so yeah am i a man or a worm this refers to a video uploaded on youtube in 2013 it shows a human in a worm costume singing am i a man or a worm This video was uploaded by YouTuber ChunkyM. It's a weird video, the only video you'll see when you go deep in the depths of YouTube's recommended system. That's not funny, that's sick. I had a hard time finding anything, but apparently this was uploaded in 2012. The opening sequence of the video starts with the guy looking so disturbed and saying this. I'm so happy because these kids are starting to go back to school. I like little kids. I like to look at little kids. They're so cute. Little kids, they're so cute. Little kids. Oh god, little kids. This series is something else. It only has 4,000 views and is unlisted. Apparently this is a pilot episode that started the series. It was a public access comedy TV show. Also, Blame It On Jorge did a video on this, just to let you know. What I'm thinking about, 1995. This is a YouTube video that features an endless loop of elves diving into a shredder. It loops for 15 minutes. The odd thing is that the music gives it disturbing vibe because the world seems to be empty but yet has lots of noise. The uploader Dave Arnold made the video and it's actually him in the video. He has the elf costume till this day. If you play at 2 times speed, it actually sounds normal. Rare Bambi knockoff CGI animation. This rare Bambi knockoff animation is called Bambi Survivor of the Animal Kingdom. No relevant information is available on Google, not even the production company. The only clue we have is the use of Prenesturit, implies an origin either with a German speaker. My theory is that the owner of the YouTube channel made this because of one of the videos looks like it's titled in German. Pori Dance Robot Well you guessed it, it's another weird video on YouTube. This time it's a weird animation of a dancing robot dancing to Mr. Roboto by Syndax. It was uploaded 13 years ago and only has 587 views. There's no background information about this video so it's probably just a shit post or an arc project. Moving on. Coke, Lick My Brain in Silence. Another weird music video. I Lick My Brain in Silence depicts a woman singing and there's a brick wall behind her. The video has a weird editing and the woman looks so awkward that it gives me true nightmare fuel for no reason. The album was released in 2004. If you take a closer look in the YouTube channel, it shows the same theme from the video spread across the YouTube channel. The most recent upload was two months ago. Star Wars Jetty. I couldn't find anything about this, so sorry. If you guys know what it is, then comment down below. Like, I've never heard about this. I did extensive research and I could not find anything. So yeah, moving on. See Mario at Sea Goku. Let's go. Something actually kind of cool. See Mario at Sea Goki can be translated into Super Mario vs. Son Goku. A synopsis taken from IMDb states, Looney William Martinez stars as your cop wacko thrill seeker, whatever that fucking means, who entered into a series of hell-raising misadventures that will take the viewer to the outskirts of a computer-generated fantasia. This movie was taken from a now-out-of-print DVD release by Spanish editor Trashorama. This knockoff movie sucks, but I'd rather see this than this movie. 
Hashtag vote hell 91. We have reached the last entry. Hashtag vote hell 91 is a video of lo-fi music and shows a cop doing all sorts of shenanigans. This video was used for an ongoing campaign to promote Chuck Hell for County Sheriff during 1991. That's all I got for this video. I'm pretty sure. Finally, that was it. That was the entire weird obscure media iceberg. I've covered lots of weird things and odd stuff. This would be the first long format video on my channel. I hope it gets good reception, but whatever. If you guys enjoyed the video, please subscribe and like for my sanity. I don't know if I'm ever going to make a long format video again, at least for a while. Well, don't mind me. I'm going to go kill some more brain cells. See you soon.